Hey, I'll tell you what, we're back in the studio here and I'm gonna show you guys the proper way that I think to tie a fly rig. And uh, I've got two different ways I like to tie it and uh, let me go to town here. First, uh, we're always using 10 or 12 pound test. Typically a, a tough line like an XT works the best. I'm gonna go with about, for my sinker, I like to go with about a 14 inch dropper. So, and the other thing is, I, when I'm tying the sinker line, I'm always using it. I very seldom ever tie it direct, but I'm always using a snap swivel. And you say, why do you use a snap swivel? There's a, that sinker has got a lot of pull to it, and I don't want it twisting my fly rig up. So, and I use a snap on there because I can change my weight if I want to go heavier. Um, you know, you move up river and the current's stronger or less, um, you, you can change the weight real simply. I'm going to cut it off at about 14 inches, which is pretty standard. Got that. Always using a really good three-way. Again, when anytime you're pulling something in current, and you know, 90% of when I'm pulling something, I'm going to be pulling it upstream. I could be tacking to the side back and forth, which is real important. Um, very seldom do I actually pull down river. Now, the lead. Now, and the leads can really vary when you start talking about lengths for your hooks. So basically what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go to about a six foot lead. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna use these, tie them up for an example. So I'll run my first lead right through, run it up the fly. Distance, done, okay, there's fly number one. Pull it straight, yep, just like that. Okay, fly number two, there, number two. And the last fly, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Cut off the tag in. Okay, there's my leads for my fly. Okay, I'm gonna attach it to my three-way. Most of the time when I am tying my rig up, I always use a lighter line for when I'm tying my sinker up because most likely that's what's gonna get stuck first. Instead of losing the whole rig, I'd rather just lose the sinker. Here's our rig right here, all ready to put on a rod and ready to rock and roll. Now you'll see the difference on this fly rig, just the way it's hooked up. Them little snaps on there, makes such a huge difference. And like I said, when we jump in the boat here in a little bit, I'll show you the difference on how that works. And like I say, there is a lot of times where I will just take my scissors with me and uh, just trim off, you know, about half of that hair. I tried to just keep it flat like that, the scissors, and just start kind of butchering it up, just like your mom cuts your hair when you were a kid, except for we're not using a bowl. So sometimes just that little bit by taking some of that hair off there can make a night and day difference. And again, with the, the snap too, we're using a snap like that. All right, we're all rigged up. <clears throat> Let's go see what we can catch today. Hey everybody, Lance Sweden with Great Day Guiding out here. Larry Smith Outdoors, out here fishing with uh, good clients of mine, Steve and Mark. Out here pulling flies today. Um, kind of show you our simple setup here. Basically all we have is a three-way drop. A lot of people go from four, four inches to eight inches on the drop there. Right now we're using two ounce weights. We have been using three ounce weights with all the current. Then you usually have about a five to a six foot lead with flies hooked on the back of it. And typically what we're doing when we're going upstream, usually we like to run about a half mile an hour, half mile an hour to six tenths of a mile an hour. Uh, a lot of people don't use it going downstream. We do, when I do, uh, usually go around one mile an hour. Um, and usually when the fish hit, hits, it's a lot like trolling. Steve's got one on right now, as you can see right here. And there, don't have to do much of a hook set to you, Steve. They're on right off the bat, right? And you can see his lead there. It's about a six, seven foot lead. That one bit on a red and black fly.
Hey, I'll tell you what, everybody, today we're out on the water and we're actually going to show everybody the proper way that we think to pull fl flies. And you know, the cool part about pulling flies is that, you know, one thing, when you get hit, get a strike, and you miss the fish, you don't have to pull the, the rig back in because obviously there's nothing there that's going to fall off like live bait. And the other part is we're using three flies on there and most of the time what I'll do is I'll run two of one color and then one odd one in there. Uh, usually using, you know, um, we're fishing anywhere from like 6 to 20 feet of water and what I'm doing basically is I'm using a fly rig that's got about a 6 foot leader. Now, I've got a little different rig on than these other two. Um, mine are tied on. I actually have a snap on there, and then the, the fly is on a snap. I kind of like that most days. Uh, not always, especially when the water temperature warms up a little bit because it gives the fly just a little bit more action. Um, but there is other times where I will tie it direct where it's not moving around as much. And when the water's colder, it seems to work a little better. But now that the water's warmed up, I want that fly darting back and forth a little bit and just giving it a little bit different of action. And so far, it's definitely working. Um, and, and another key thing is when you're pulling flies, most of the time we're pulling upstream. And what we do is when we're pulling upstream, we kind of zig back and forth. And that does two things. You're working your way up and down the break. And the other part is when you're zig zigging to the left and to the right, it actually changes the speed. So one side of the boat is slowing down and the other side is speeding up. And a lot of times that's when you're going to get bit when you, when you start moving back and forth into the current right there. Even if you're working an expanse of flats, I'll still work back and forth. Very seldom will I ever just go straight up into the current. I'm always ticking and tacking back and forth. Now the other part is too, is that when you're pulling flies, there's different ways you're pumping it. Sometimes it's a real s short snap, and other times it's more of a, a slower pull forward. And you gotta remember what's happening is when you're pulling forward, the hair on the fly is actually closing. And then when you, when you go back, you'll, as you can see here, the, the hair is actually opening up and it pulsates back and forth into that current. That's the reason you're pulling it back and forth, again, to create that pulsating action on that bait. Get rid of my fish slime after you slobbered me all up. Oh, he still looks as bad as he did. Well, Tubatellas can't do everything. You know, we were talking before about all the different ways to, to rig your flies, and we've showed you in the studio a few different ways that we rig them. Um, another way is besides, you know, tying them direct or using a snap, is we use these, they're called a quick snap. It's a little smaller profile, and you can see the nice part about it is it does give the fly a little bit different action in the water. But the other part is it's nice so when you want to change the fly, let's say they're biting on a certain color, you don't have to tie another rig. All you got to do is just pop that, that off there. All you got to do is pop that off there and away you go. So using a quick snap really is a, a convenient way to go. Again, easy to change that fly. And again, it does give it a little bit of a different action. Basically, I'll take the sinker, put it around the handle of the rod, and what I'll do is I'll actually lock that in, the whole rig in, just by wrapping the line in there. It's nothing worse than starting off at a new spot and getting there and then your rig is all tangled up. And that's another part about using that. I use a lot of real stiff line, like an XT 12 pound, uh, besides the way it makes the flies float through the water. When you do get tangled up, it's easy to get them untangled, but that's nice because you can throw that anywhere you want, and when it comes to stopping to the next spot and fishing, all you gotta do is pop the first fly, which I always keep on the lowest point, on Rava like that, boom, your rig's ready to go. This is why you put your rig away the right way, not the Hunter Flanders way, right? See, look at his sinker, see his sinker? All over the place, yep, could break his rod tip, you know, store things the proper way so you know when you go to move to another spot we're not sitting here for 15 minutes trying to wreck a guy's jacket 
kind of relaxing too. Oop, there we go. Must be a wallet. Oh, there we go. A little better fish right there. You know, the nice part about fishing with flies is too, is that it is very relaxing. You can cover a tremendous amount of water and you never really know what you're gonna catch. I mean, from white bass to walleyes to perch, I've caught some big pike on them, caught some carp on them. It's just a fun way and a very productive way to fish. And I hope everybody learned a lot from our video today. Um, we're gonna try to put out new videos almost every week now here on YouTube, how to's. So you know what, make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, like I always say, it's a great day to be alive. Basically, again, just bleeding them, making your cut, going right down the back. And the big thing is not to press the knife real deep into the skin. I'll keep it up high like this. See that? You don't even have any mud in there and you don't have to. That's exactly what you want. The least amount of that dark meat you have, the better you are. Again. Again, not pressing the knife. If you press the knife deep down, this is what you're going to get. And real tight, you're going to get that. And that's where all the oils are. And you're going to get that fishy flavor from it. So again, when you're cleaning them, keep that last one we got to do here. Just keep that knife up. Fine. such a big difference.